Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Westchester University. Would you please help me by standing and welcoming the 2019 graduating class. Dr. Chris Hanning and I have the great fortune to be the Dean of the Wells School of Music and I am extremely pleased to introduce Catherine Carbino, class of 2019, graduating from the Wells School of Music who will lead us in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Stars. 
Thank you, Catherine, and the Wells School of Music, Brass, and Percussion Ensemble. Please be seated. Welcome, honored guests, families, friends, alumni, faculty, staff, and most especially members of the Wells School of Music, class of 2019. Today is a very special day because it marks the first Wells School of Music graduating class. Congratulations. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome all of the mothers in the audience who are taking time out of this very important holiday, Mother's Day, to attend graduation today. <laughs> Graduates, I would like to take a brief moment to remind you of what a significant achievement you have attained. You have developed critical skills and knowledge for your career, your personal life, and for a life of benefit to others. You stand poised now on the brink of a new life. Such transformations can be unsettling, but I'm confident that Westchester University has prepared you well for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. The skills and competencies that you have developed as you studied for your degree and spent countless of hours in the practice rooms and classrooms of Swope Hall, countless hours, right, <laughs> will help you to continue to learn throughout your life and to seek out and transition into new opportunities. Graduates, you have earned an outstanding degree and now join an illustrious group of alumni from the Wells School of Music. You have all received pins today that represent the arts at WCU. Wear this pin proudly at special events, conferences, or all the time if you like. When people ask you about the pin, tell them it represents arts at WCU and that you wear it as a reminder of where your music career began and the importance of having art in our daily lives. The world awaits your talents, your passion, your big ideas, and your boundless energy. Best wishes, members of the Westchester University Wells School of Music, class of 2019. Guests at today's commencement include an esteemed group of committed WCU administrators, staff, alumni, and distinguished guests, including our commencement speaker. I ask that all members of the platform party, administrators and staff in attendance, to please stand and be recognized for your service. Thank you. I would like to recognize another group that has had a great deal to do with your being here today, the faculty of Westchester University. The faculty constitutes a diverse group united by their love of teaching and their dedication to the students of Westchester University. Without them, the milestones we mark today could not have been reached. Will the current and retired faculty of the university present today please stand and be recognized. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Executive Vice President and Provost of Westchester University, Dr. Lori Bernatsky. Thanks, Dr. Hanning. I'm not sure if everybody knows, but this is the first time we've actually broken our undergrad commencement ceremonies up by college, and I have to say, Although our soloists are always magnificent, I've never heard an audience sound better when they are singing the Star Spangled Banner, so this is a great treat. Um, I plan to keep my remarks uh, brief today since I know most of you are here just to hear two words, your first name and your last name being read as you walk across the stage. Having said that, do I just want to extend two thoughts. First, don't let anyone define your success, and second, have confidence in your resiliency to face a changing world. On October 26, 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered what I consider to be one of his most inspiring addresses just miles from here at a junior high school in Philadelphia. His remarks centered on this question, what is your life's blueprint? Explaining how no sound building is erected without a solid blueprint he urged the students in his audience to create a proper, solid, and sound blueprint for life. He said, number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, your own somebodiness. 
always feel that you count, always feel that your life has ultimate significance. His advice bears repeating, believe in your own dignity, your own worth, and never ever doubt that your life has ultimate significance. To his words, let me add, you define your own success. Having your own sense of somebodyness, defining your own success, means there is no reason to be living in by someone else's idea of what you should do with your life. In other words, the point is not so much about what you do, rather it is to bring your whole self to whatever you do, to show up, to be present, to give your all. I know that many of you today hold certainty in the passion you have for your chosen vocation, and your service will be absolutely critical to future generations. Even with this commitment, however, some of you will likely shift direction as you move through your life. And I want you to know today that that is okay. The Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that the students we are preparing today will likely change careers five to seven times in their lifetimes. Careers, not jobs. So how can a college degree prepare you for that level of change? As a student graduating today from Westchester University, you can be confident about your future because each of you has learned how to learn. This commitment is at the heart of undergraduate education at WCU. Yes, this preparation comes through coursework and experiences in your major, but what also makes you resilient and well-prepared for the future comes through your liberal arts foundation and a commitment to remaining a lifelong learner. Because of your strong foundation in the liberal arts and by having the liberal arts as central in your life's blueprint, each of you has endless possibilities. The next time you walk through the whispering arches of Phillips Hall, just outside of us here, you will pass through as a graduate of Westchester University. Celebrate your success in this moment. And building on Dr. King's advice some 50 years ago, if it falls to your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Teach third graders like Beethoven composed music. Deliver health care like Shakespeare wrote poetry. No matter where your path in life takes you, heed King Sage advice, keep moving forward as a lifelong learner. Move forward with the confidence that you have learned how to learn. And for that reason, without question, you have what you need to be resilient in a changing world. Congratulations, class of 2019. Thank you, Dr. Bernatsky. It is now my sincere pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker. Henry Pearlberg is currently in his 37th year as a music teacher in the Wallingford Swarthmore School District in Delaware County, PA, where he is an instrumental and classroom music teacher at Strathaven Middle School, the assistant director of the Strathaven High School Panther Marching Band, and is the chairperson for performing arts in the Wallingford Swarthmore School District. Wallingford Swarthmore School District instrumental and choral programs have been highly regarded and respected in Pennsylvania as one of the top music programs. And the school district has been recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants as best communities in music education for the past four years. As a member of Pennsylvania Music Educators Association and National Association for Music Education, Mr. Pearlberg has, has been a past PMEA District 12 president and was the state PMEA president from 2016 to 2018. As state president, his initiatives included working on inclusivity, diversity access, and equity of music programs for all students throughout Pennsylvania, providing professional development for fellow music educators and other arts organizations. He has been awarded with the WSSD Excellence in Service Award, Council Rock High School Alumni Award of Distinction, Philadelphia Phillies Teacher All-Star, PMEA Citation of Excellence, and Stanford University School of Engineering Frederick Emmons Terman Scholastic Award. This year, he was also recognized by our president, Christopher Ferentino, as a WCU Distinguished Alumni. Please welcome to the podium our 2019 commencement speaker, WCU Class of 1982, Mr. Henry Pearlberg. Thank you, Dr. Hanning and the Westchester University Music Faculty for the invitation to share this day with the 2019 graduating class of the Westchester University Wells School of Music. 
I would also like to welcome parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, all relatives and friends. I cannot describe fully into words what it means for me to come back to my alma mater. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here today. Also, before I get started today, it is also another an important day. Happy Mother's Day as well. Graduates, this day is not just about you. About four years ago, your parents and guardians brought you here to the campus of Westchester University, helped you move into your dormitory, and drove away with a few tears into a much emptier house. Let us thank your first teachers, your parents, guardians, and relatives who have had an immense impact on shaping and encouraging you and supporting your dreams. Let us stand up and give them a round of applause. I now can go home and tell my wife my speech was interrupted with people standing ovations and rounds of applause. <laughs> Class of 2019 has been four years, and maybe for a few of you, a few more than that, of hard work. You have spent countless hours in the classroom, in the library, and in the practice room. You have mastered your musicianship through lessons and the many performances you have given in ensembles and recitals. And lastly, during your senior year, many of you have been out into the schools putting your knowledge and skills into practice. Even though many of you may be unsure where your journey will take you, it is time to take that next step. In preparing for my remarks today, I've been reflecting over the past few weeks on what I could be sharing with you over the past 37 years that would be meaningful to you today. Much has changed at the university since 1982. The campus has undergone a dramatic change. Old buildings are gone and there are many new ones that have risen. And although my, smoke, my Swope Music Building was just across the street, and none of these professors here on stage were on the faculty during my time at Westchester State College, my experiences were very formative to my development as a musician and aspiring educator, as I am sure they have been for you. The classes, ensembles, life on, on and off campus had a huge impact on me. Looking back, my college was a wonderful period in my life as it prepared me exceptionally well with the necessary skills and life experiences to be a successful music educator. I enjoyed the rigor of the classes, lessons, and music ensembles. They were challenging and gave me the opportunity to discover many things about myself. I have to warn you, though, things will get harder and a bit more complicated. Job opportunities with interviews for teaching positions during the spring and summer of 1982 were not abundant. I was very fortunate to land a long-term substitute position that year. Ultimately, though, it turned out to be a one-year position, and I would need to start looking again. As luck turned out, one of my classmates and closest friends, Jack Hans, was in the same situation, and he was interviewing for a high school band job in the Wallingford Swarthmore School District in Delaware County. At that time, this was a school district that had a reputation for not supporting music. Jack accepted the position and recommended to the school administration that if they were very serious about rebuilding the music program, he would need some help and recommended me to get the students started on their instruments. I was hired. And as far as my career, it turned out to be the smartest decision that I ever made. Our first years at Wallingford Swarthmore, we only had a very few number of students participating in the music program. There was no curriculum. There was no print to be followed. There was just a clean slate, an opportunity to be creative and create a vision. And rather than be discouraged about our situation, we approached our task ahead of us with a lot of energy, enthusiasm, creativity, and a promise to the students and community that we would work hard to give everyone a music program that was meaningful, and something to be proud of. The program gradually grew, and as we started providing varied opportunities, both in and out of school, the district administration and community supported our efforts and provided additional faculty and resources to the burgeoning music program. <clears throat> over the past 15 years, we are very proud that over 50% of our school district student body actively participates in performing music ensembles, and we have a robust and diverse offerings of music electives. I am often asked, why I wanted to become a music educator. Education was very important in my family while I was growing up. Both of my parents were public school educators, my mother a high school English teacher, and my father a music educator. Learning to play instruments was introduced to us at a very early age. During my middle and high school years of the music program, it was my second home. I was one of those band geeks that hung out in the band room during my free periods and after school. My friends were in the music program, and it's what it gave meaning to how I expressed myself. My music teachers noticed me, and they became my heroes and my role models. 
I knew early on that this was something that I wanted to do with my life. As a, music, as a future music educator, you will have opportunities to positively impact many lives. I am often asked, what has been the most meaningful experience you have had on your students as a music teacher? I have been very fortunate to have had opportunity to teach in an excellent suburban school district that supports and values the arts. Over 37 years, there have been thousands of students who have walked into my classroom. I've had students who have had many resources available to them, as well as students with whom school provides almost everything that they need. I've had ensembles and individual students that have reached the heights of recognition for the musicianship, and I've had students whose every lesson was a struggle to get them to play the next note. I think the most meaningful experiences have included those students that I have positively impacted that otherwise would not have had those opportunities. You won't see those results on a score sheet or read about it in the paper, but to see those eyes light up knowing that you have perhaps given that student an opportunity to collaborate, to do something creative, or to just build their self-esteem and confidence and become, become a part of a community, it's very self-fulfilling. Four years ago, in 2015, I received a phone call while on a band field trip. It was a former student of mine named Nicholas Chung. Nick, while he attended Strathaven Middle School, was a cellist and a percussionist, and he was very involved in the music program, participating in orchestra, concert band, jazz band, and the marching band. He was an excellent musician, very motivated student, high achieving both academically and musically. He was the ideal student to have in your program. On the day that I received this phone call from Nick four years ago, he was a senior at Stanford University as an engineering major. Nick was informed that he would be receiving a very prestigious engineering award as one of the school's top 30 graduating seniors. And as part of this award, each of these seniors would have the opportunity to invite a pre-college teacher that they had, who they felt was the most influential to them to come to Stanford to be part of this ceremony. I was so very honored that Nick would choose his middle school band director and that he felt that somehow I impacted him through his music program for his success as an engineering major. It was three wonderful days at Stanford. With great pride, Nick showed me a few of the engineering projects that he had worked on with his classmates. And I, of course, nodded my head pretending to understand all of it. But what I did understand was, though, all these projects were collaborative in nature. It reminded me very much of the many processes that we incorporate on a daily basis in music. What I didn't still understand, though, was why Nick felt his involvement in our school music program and I had been so influential to him. Nick's mother later explained to me that while Nick was in middle school, he struggled with math. He did not connect with his math teachers, and because of that, Nick was going through a lot of emotional challenges during his middle school years. It was because of the music program that kept Nick engaged in school and helped him navigate through middle school. The music program helped develop in Nick skills such as motivation, determination, perseverance, and that failure is okay. Most importantly, music helped Nick express himself creatively in ways that is unique to our art. Nick's story is not unique. You will have hundreds of students like Nick in your classroom every day, and you will find a way to engage them in your classes and help them develop their skills and passions. On a side note, when I was invited to come to Stanford, I was so excited. I asked permission from my school superintendent, Dr. Noonan, if I could miss a day of school to travel out to California, explained to him that the award and I would be attending a luncheon and I would get to say a few words about Nick. He, of course, gave me permission to go, and he must have mentioned something at the following school board meeting. The following week, I was getting Facebook messages and texts congratulating me that I was speaking at the Stanford University's commencement. <laughs> this is a result of an article that was published in the local newspaper from a reporter who attended that board meeting. I was horrified. And I immediately went back to Dr. Noonan, asking him if he thought I, it would be a good idea if I could contact that reporter to write a retraction to the article. And I can remember this to this day. Dr. Noonan, with the straightest of expressions, looked me in the eye and said, Henry, you can do whatever you want, but no one will ever mistake you for Steve Jobs. <laughs> he was right. Outside of my teaching students at Wallingford Swarthmore, I have become involved in Pennsylvania Music Educators Association, both as a member and in leadership positions. I just have finished my term as the state president, and I can tell you it has been one of the most professionally rewarding experiences for me. The importance of constant advocacy, understanding state and national education policy, curriculum and instruction, and the important opportunity to collaborate with my peers. 
What I have learned through PMEA as an educator is that the opportunity to continue learning through my career has been essential for me to stay relevant with my students and in this profession. Active participation in professional organizations, graduate coursework, and any other relevant professional development is a necessary requirement throughout your career. Take advantage of any opportunity you will have to collaborate with your fellow music educators and other faculty members. Seek out leadership positions and volunteer to be on committees. You will continue to learn and adapt your teaching as your students change every year. I can confidently tell you I am not the same teacher I was 37 years ago, nor even 10 years ago. As it, with everything in life, everything is constantly evolving, and with this, the education landscape is in constant change. The demographics of the communities that we live and work in have changed over the past four decades. Three years ago, the National Association for Music Education, NAFME, published two position papers. One was on inclusivity and diversity in music education, and the other was on equity and access in music education. And these two statements, if you would just give me a moment, read, a well-rounded and comprehensive music education program as envisioned in the 2014 national standards should exist in every American school. Should be built on a curricular framework that promotes awareness of, respect for, and responsive to the variety and diversity of cultures and should be delivered by teachers who are culturally responsive and enable them to successfully design and implement such a, cur a curricular framework. And all students deserve access and equity in the delivery of music education, one of the subjects deemed necessary in the federal law for a well-rounded education. The challenge in our schools is that our music-making ensembles and opportunities often do not reflect our student populations. You are entering a more diverse community today than what I began my teaching career almost four decades ago, and we need to continue to evolve finding creative ways to engage all of our children in music-making. So my charge here for you today is to continue to work meeting this challenge in your future classrooms. As I close with my remarks today, I would like to offer you some advice to help you through the beginning of your teaching career. Remind yourself of why you chose this profession, your love of helping others, teaching children, serving the profession. You will work hard, but the rewards are priceless. Collaborate with your colleagues. Make your actions and decisions based on what is best for your students. Be empathetic. If your students sense that you care for their well-being, you will build the trust that is so very crucial. Have a sense of humor, particularly in this field. You are working with kids. Try not to take yourself too seriously. Be flexible. If nothing else, you will learn very rarely will things go exactly as planned. Be ready for and embrace change. It will inevitably happen. You are a role model. How you carry yourself, what you say, the gestures you use will all influence your students. Be organized. The job forces you to be organized. You are working with hundreds of students each week, teaching multiple lessons, planning with colleagues. There are never enough hours in the day. And lastly, take care of yourself. Your professional schedule will be different from your college schedule. Get plenty of rest, eat well, exercise, Find some hobbies and make music outside of a school. Spend time with your family and friends. Find a healthy balance of work and relaxation. As you take your next steps tomorrow, do not be afraid to take risks. Be creative, look beyond the surface, and don't get discouraged. Opportunities are out there for you to create your vision. And to quote Steve Jobs from his 2005 Stanford commencement address, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Thank you for allowing me to share your day. I wish you the best as you move forward to the most rewarding opportunities ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, for your inspirational words. Now I'd like to turn your attention to our Wells School of Music Brass and Percussion Ensemble performing Flourish for Wind Band by Ralph Vaughn Williams under the direction of our Assistant Director of Bands, Dr. Gregory Martin.
Thank you, Dr. Martin. I am now pleased to introduce Caitlin Gallagher, graduating from the Wells School of Music, who will present greetings on behalf of the class of 2019. On behalf of the class of 2019, we would like to thank all of those who made today possible. Faculty and staff, friends, family, and my peers that sit before me. In the past years, we've created a family. Swope is not just a, a building, it is a home. Together we have grown into amazing musicians, performers, composers, theorists, educators, and leaders. Without each of you and your talents, this would not be possible, and it is truly an honor to represent each of you today. A few years ago, we each made the decision to pack up everything we knew and begin a new adventure where everything is purple and gold and everyone hails to the golden ram. The time was full of excitement, nerves, and sadness. Today, we are taking another leap, beginning the next journey in our lives. Again, we are leaving home, our Swope family. Enjoy these moments sitting all together one last time with friends, peers, and this amazing faculty who has changed our lives. Remember the fond memories we have shared and what is yet to come. As I think about the past years, I see how much we have grown. As freshmen, I saw Swope as a palace, a magical place where dreams come true. We were all confident in our abilities, maybe a little too confident at times. <laughs> Most of us found our first friends in marching band and realized that we had joined a band where everyone was a drum major and why mom told us to wear sunscreen. We became part of a studio where we grew as a person and as a musician. We also may have questioned whether or not we made the right decision. Music school is not what you expect, but in those first few performances, you learn that you are now part of something that is bigger than yourself and it makes those long hours in the practice room worth it. As our college careers continued, music took on a new perspective. It was now a vocation, no longer an escape or a hobby. Most of us spent more time in Swope than in our own beds as a result of becoming more invested in our endeavors. Longer practice time to attain the top seat, to get the solo, to win the competition, to be a great musician. Becoming more involved, serving in clubs and organizations, late night meetings, service projects, conferences. Studies in our degree, harder classes, surviving theory and orals, more projects, and even underdunks paper. <laughs> it may have been difficult, it may have been frustrating. You may have cried in a practice room a few times, but you came out an artist with a palette of skills to be successful. Now in our final year, Swope is a home. It is a place where we become who we are today. We have made friendships that will last a lifetime, and it is where our success has begun in our professional career. In our final studies, we find passion and excitement for what our future will hold. We share talents with friends, family, professionals, and the future generation. We value every day walking through the glass doors of Swope at Westchester, knowing that we, as a Westchester student, will always have a home, no matter how far our career will take us. Being part of the commencement speaker is sharing advice with all of you for the future. Though I would not be the individual that I am today without the constant support and advice you all have shared with me the past four years. This is what I have learned from you. Remember to ask yourself, does it bring me joy? Life is too short to do something you do not love. Don't be afraid to change your path. Be passionate in what you do, and remember that you come first. Never pass up an invite to lunch. You never know what people are going to come into your life. Be open to new experiences and what people can share with you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Though as we are about to enter the next step in our lives, remember that even though the world is big, the music world is small, and that we will always be there. Take the bull, or in this case, the ram by the horns. Be bold in whatever you do, take chances, be different, strive for success. 
Class of 2019, I am so proud of what we are about to accomplish. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. That was fantastic. I am happy to announce that today's ceremony is being photographed by a professional photographer who will take pictures of the graduates as they come up to the stage and as they receive their diploma covers. These photographs will be made available to graduates, families, and friends. We ask that you refrain from taking personal pictures except from your seats. I now call on Dean Hanning to present the degree candidates. Will all baccalaureate degree candidates please rise? Dr. Bernatsky, I am pleased to certify that the members of the class of 2019 have fulfilled all of the requirements for the degrees which this university awards in their particular fields of study and are recommended to you by the faculty of Westchester University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the president of Westchester University, I hereby confer upon you the baccalaureate degrees to which you are entitled. Dr. Bernatsky, I have the honor to present these recipients of the bachelor degree in the Wells School of Music. Marshals, please escort the candidates forward to receive the symbolic presentation of their degrees. Caitlin L. Gallagher, summa cum laude. Catherine E. Corbino, magna cum laude. Donovan P. Donnelly. Connor C. Riley. Christopher A. Leonas. David E. Lewis, summa cum laude. David R. Bonilla Garcia, cum laude. Zachary M. Prouse, summa cum laude. Isabella M. Pajirski, magna cum laude. Jennifer K. Smith, magna cum laude. Lauren M. Longi, summa cum laude. <laughs> Alexandra J. Brook, magna cum laude. Olivia R. Yachnik, magna cum laude. Jana R. Collins. Devaney M. Ross, summa cum laude. John R. Simone. Eric P. Liebenthal. Eleftheria M. Zerifos, magna cum laude. Daniel E. Ruggeri. Nicholas H. Booth, cum laude. Patrick T. O'Neill, cum laude. Brett A. Bailey, summa cum laude. Tyler C. Mead, summa cum laude.
summa cum laude. Lauren J. Platt, cum laude. Maria D. Seffron, summa cum laude. Daniel S. Fullman. Logan J. Kennedy, cum laude. Alex W. Dwyer, summa cum laude. Allison M. Rack, summa cum laude. Lauren A. Leatherland, cum laude. Nicholas D. Bowser, summa cum laude. John R. Liederman, magna cum laude. Kylie S. Bleacher, magna cum laude. Jessica L. Henry. Cameron C. Davis, cum laude. Nadine B. Silverman, summa cum laude. Zoe E. Kexkamethi, summa cum laude. Rachel Lee, summa cum laude. Lavinia Arshid. Stephen J. Gliato, summa cum laude. Blair C. Cunningham, summa cum laude. Isabel R. Bender, summa cum laude. Jessica L. Lynch, summa cum laude. Audrey F. Rake, magna cum laude. Danielle L. O'Hare, magna cum laude. Cassandra C. Rosenfeld, magna cum laude. Casey W. Juba, magna cum laude. Christopher R. Carlson, summa cum laude. <coughs> Haley A. Cowan, summa cum laude. Sarah E. Tomasulo, cum laude. Kimberly R. Devi, cum laude. Holly N. Roberts, cum laude. Stephen R. Tipton, summa cum laude. <laughs> Dominic J. Vitale, cum laude. I would like to now ask Caitlin Gallagher to lead you in the tasseling ceremony. Baccalaureate degree recipients, please stand. <laughs> in symbolic recognition of the receipt of your academic degree, I ask you to transfer the tassel from the right to the left side of your cap.
Thank you, Caitlin. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Nick Polcini, a member of the WCU Alumni Association Board of Directors and a graduate of the class of 2000, who will present greetings from the Alumni Association. Please be seated. Good afternoon, graduates. I hope you enjoyed receiving your love. Some things that were handed to you by one of, your alum, one of our alums from the Wells School of Music. Um, it's our way of connecting with you for the future. Um, it is an honor as an alum to stand before you today. I value every day as an educator, given this wonderful educational opportunity that was given to me here at this great institution. I have one request to ask you, and every one of you, as you transition from as a WCU student and now a WCU alumni, I am asking you for a commitment. A commitment to continue to be part of this university. You can go through as you attend a homecoming, or you can come back to our alumni weekend, maybe be a member of our board of directors, or join an alumni committee, or even come back and give some type of monetary amount to the university. Come back and give to your alma mater. <laughs> Come on, work with me here. Um, but no, in all seriousness, as a student leader when I attended Westchester, it was through my leadership skills that brought me into as a special educator here in the Westchester Area School District. It was all the leadership skills that I learned here that brought me to being on the board today and learning my leadership through that role. In closing, I am honored to welcome you into over 110,000 alumni at this great institution. You are now part of the distinguished WCU alumni and welcome to our community. Thank you again and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Polcini. Uh, today, we have honored our graduates. I know that every member of this class has enjoyed the support of some very special people in their lives. Now I would like to offer the graduates a moment to express their appreciation to families and friends who have provided so much help along the way. Will the families of the graduates, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, children, and loved ones, please rise so that you can receive the thanks you so richly deserve. that was long and enthusiastic because we all know as music parents what it's like driving our kids around to rehearsals and in the evenings and lessons and but uh, truly we're, we're so uh, grateful that you're here. Thus ends our spring commencement. As Dean of the Wells School of Music at Westchester University I wish to extend to all the graduates and their families heartiest congratulations. Please rise and join in singing the first verse of our alma mater the words are found on page two of your program. Connor Riley, class of 2019 from the Wells School of Music will lead us. At the conclusion of the alma mater, please remain standing until the platform party has recessed and join us for a brief reception at the Swope Music Building Lobby. Yes, please come in the rain if you can down to Swope and, uh, and have a nice reception in the lobby. <laughs> 